He said that only the shaheed would want to return. Not for the pleasures of this dunya, not for the emptiness and the fakeness of this dunya, but he would want to return to perform the shahada again. To die, or to fight, or to defend, or to spread the kalima of la ilaha illallah. That's why the shaheed would want to return. And, and he, he would want to feel that. He would want to have the honor again and again. Because the person who does the good deeds for the sake of Allah never regrets. You never regret what is good. You regret what is bad. You regret what is evil. But the, the person who does the good deed with the pure intention, this person has no regret. He never regrets. Not in this dunya and not in the hereafter. And the bad Muslim in the grave, and when I say bad Muslim, what do I mean? I mean the person who died without repenting. He may have committed major sins and he didn't repent. He didn't repent. As for the person who repented, who made tawbah, sincere tawbah to Allah, and that person died, التَّائِبُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَلْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَهُ Which means the person who repented from the sin, it's as if he has no sin at all. He, it's as if he doesn't have a sin. So suppose a person did many bad things and he repented before he died. And then he died. Just because we know of him bad, that he did bad sins, it doesn't mean he's a, he died as a bad Muslim. If he died as a repent, uh, as a repentant Muslim, then mashaAllah, tabarakallah, hani an lahu, a great merit to him. Congratulations, we, we tell him congratulations. We don't cry for him, we're happy for him. Because he left this world in a repentant, in a, in, in a good state. But the person who died as a bad Muslim, even if he missed one prayer, intentionally, if he missed one prayer, or he drank alcohol, or he did something haram, that person, he's under the mercy of Allah. If, if for some bad Muslims, they will get torture in the grave. And so, some bad Muslims, Allah would forgive them in the grave. And it is stated that Uthman used to go, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, he used to go to the graves. And when, when, when he went to the graves, he would cry so much when he remembered the death and the state of the hereafter and the importance of life and the importance of our journey in this life to be obedient to Allah despite the obstacles that hit us despite the distractions that tell us to fall into haram and to give up the person who's patient and who perseveres he's the total winner Uthman radiallahu anhu would cry until his beard was wet I've never seen that in my life we hear these stories and these stories are not just made up just to motivate us these people were truly sincere. They were true, very pious Muslims, and their hearts were, were very soft and gentle. And it was said he would cry until his beard became wet, became damp. And he said, radiallahu anhu, whoever Allah saves, uh, whoever Allah saves from the torture of the grave, he will also be saved in the hereafter. He will also be saved in the hereafter. As for the Muslim, as for the non-pious Muslim, for the bad Muslim who dies, the disobedient Muslim, he could be forgiven by Allah even in the grave, or he could be not forgiven and suffer some, he could suffer some torture, but it would not be similar to that of the non-believer. It would not be equal to that of the non-believer. Uh, when the Prophet والسلام, was describing this, the Adab al Qabr, Umar radiallahu anhu was present and he told them, he, he asked the Prophet, he was learning, he told him, Are, are we going to be in a, in a state, like in a normal state? We'll, we'll, like in the meaning, will this be physical in body and soul? And the Prophet said, yes, just like we are now. And when Umar heard that, he was amazed. He was amazed. 
he was amazed when he heard that. And we believe in this. This is part of the belief in the unseen. We don't have doubt even if we open the grave and we don't see nothing. We believe in this 100% and we do not doubt in this. Our heart pumps and makes noises and our blood moves throughout our body. And Allah did not will for us to hear it. Allah did not will for us to hear it. The sun from a far distance away benefits the earth in a way that we know and we see and, and is so apparent. How does this happen? Allah knows. Allah is the one who made these things happen. Some of the things that happen, you see. Some of the things that happen, you do not see. Allah did not make us see this. The Muslim scholars, they said, if they said that the mercy of Allah, the mercy of Allah is that He prevented us from hearing the punishments that would be encountered in the grave. He prevented us from hearing the punishments that would be encountered in the grave. Because if we were to hear, we would not sleep. We would not sleep out of fear. Out of fear and distress, we would not sleep. Just imagine, just imagine some of us watch horror movies. Or they see someone, they see uh, uh, blood in an emergency room and they cannot sleep. And they feel grossed out, as they say. H how about if you were here, if you were to hear people truly screaming? Allah Ta'ala, by His mercy, by His great rahmat on us, protected us from that. But the people of disbelief, they don't look at it, at, uh, they don't look at it as mercy, they look at it as a trick. They say, hey, we don't hear it, we don't believe in it. We're smart people, we believe in what we see. Well, you, you, you claim to believe in what you see, but you also believe in many things that you don't see. And if you don't believe in the prophets, you will lose, you will lose, you will lose. And we ask Allah to be firm on the belief of the prophets. As for the non-Muslim, as for the non-believer or the munafiq, he would say, they would ask, the angels would ask him about Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He would say, I used to say what the people used to say. Whatever the people around him said, he used to say. He didn't have a belief, he, he didn't have trust and belief in the words that were, that, that, that were given to him about Prophet Muhammad, whether it was from the Prophet himself alayhi salatu wasalam, or through his companions, or through their students, or through their students, or even today, through the chain that it reached us today. He didn't believe in those people. He just repeated what he said. He could have been a hypocrite who said he was Muslim, but in his heart he doesn't believe in Islam. He has doubt. He doesn't know what is true. He, he's not sure about anything. Or he could have been a person who grew up in a non-Muslim environment, maybe Christian or Jewish or Buddhist, and he heard about Muhammad, and he said what he heard, many bad things or, or things that he didn't believe. Or maybe like some of them, to, 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 to feel comfortable and not to feel guilty, they say, yes, yes, we accept him as a prophet. But he, he, he's just for those Arabs. He, 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 he's a prophet of that time. You know, we're not living right now. How could we be responsible? They, they think or they say or they suppose. He, he came as a prophet and for those people. But he didn't come for us. No! No! Prophet Muhammad came for all of us. For everyone. For everyone. Whoever hears his message is responsible to accept it. This is what the Prophet taught us.